friends so today i am going to make the video on the very important topic or the concept which is very very important uh, for understanding the uv visible spectroscopy so precisely so that that is the one particular law governs the uv visible spectroscopy so that particular law which governs the uv visible spectroscopy is b lambert's law b lambert's law or or the law which governs the absorption of uv visible light by the sample or the molecule is nothing but b lambert's law so actually the b lambert's law is combination of the two laws the two laws which are proposed by proposed by two scientists the one scientist is beers beer and the other scientist is uh, lambert other scientist is lambert but there is a common thing there is a common thing uh, in uh, both of this uh, particular the beer and uh, the lambert's law that is whatever the statement which have been made by the beer and Lam lambert's how the common thing that is the reason both are combinedly uh, combinedly stated as the beer lambert's law beer lambert's law now first let us discuss what is the beer's law so beer's law is is whenever the beam of monochromatic light is passed through the sample then absorption of the light is directly proportional to the concentration of the solution concentration of the solute present in the solution concentration of the solute present in the solution that is absorbance is directly proportional to concentration of the solution so in order to understand how the absorbance is directly proportional to concentration i have considered the five beakers so in the first beaker let us take the, the normal water the bore water in the second beaker let us take the, the salt water salt water means uh, sodium chloride dissolved in the water and uh, in the third case i am going to take the, the starch solution so starch solution is the solution uh, is the solution which is resulted by dissolving the starch in the water and coming to the fourth beaker let us take the oil in it and uh, in the fifth beaker let us take the sand sand now from the first beaker let us pass the uv visible radiation uv visible radiation light source so let us pass the uv visible radiation from the water right and uh, as we know the bore water or the underground water comprises some of the dissolved salts so based upon that we can say that let us say that uh, whatever the dissolved salts which are present in the water absorb 5% of uh, the uv visible light now 5% is absorbing means uh, so definitely 95% of the light is being uh, emitted means transmitted out from this particular water so 95% is transmitted so 95% has been transmitted from the water now whenever it is passed through the salt water so salt water is more concentrated when compared to the water pure water so since it is uh, more concentrated when compared to the pure water let us say that it will absorb 10% of the light 10% of the uv visible light now it is absorbing 10% means the remaining is 85% 85% is transmitted out now 85% of the uv visible light has been transmitted from the salt water now whenever it is being passed through the starch solution in the starch solution the starch will be uh, in some of the undissolved state so based upon this we can say that it is more concentrated when compared to the salt water so since it is more concentrated when compared to the salt water let us say that uh, it will uh, absorb 15% uh, of the uv visible light so whenever it is absorbing the 15% of the uv visible light uh, so the remaining 60% of light is being transmitted out so as the 60% light is being transmitted out whenever it is passed through 
the I, I E is more concentrated when compared to the starch solution. So since I E is more concentrated when compared to the starch solution, let us say that uh, it absorbs twenty percent. It absorbs twenty percent of the light. Now the forty percent is remaining, and whenever the forty percent of the light is passed through the sand, so sand is the solid. So since it is a solid, it will absorb. Almost we can say that it is opaque. So since it is opaque in nature, so definitely we can say that it will absorb all the light which has been passing through it. That is forty percent of the light. Forty percent of the light. So dear students, so whenever the absorbance is five percent, ninety five percent has been transmitted. Whenever the absorbance is ten percent, eighty five percent is transmitted. Whenever the absorbance is fifteen percent, sixty percent is transmitted. Whenever the absorbance is twenty percent, forty percent has been transmitted. Now, as we are moving from left to right, what is happening? The concentration of the solution is increasing from normal water to salt water, salt water to salt solution, to oil to sand. So, concentration is increasing. Concentration is increasing. Concentration is increasing. Now, as the concentration is increasing, what is happening to the absorbance? Absorbance is increasing from five percent to ten percent, ten percent to fifty percent, fifty percent to twenty percent, twenty percent to forty percent, twenty percent to forty percent. So, as the concentration is increasing, absorbance is increasing. So, based upon that, we can say that absorbance is directly proportional to concentration. Absorbance is directly proportional to concentration, and this is the incident light students. I know this nothing but the incident light, and this ninety-five percent of the light is I, that is transmitted light after the absorbance, after the absorbance. So according to this particular experiment, we can say that the log I not by I equals to or directly proportional. Directly proportional to concentration, where log I not by I is nothing but A. So we can write A equals A means absorbance equals to log I not means incident light, I is transmitted light, and C is concentration of the solution. Concentration of the solution. Concentration of the solution. Now. Just remove the proportionality log I not by I. So if we remove the proportionality, then proportionality constant will come into picture. So that proportionality constant which comes into the picture is epsilon epsilon. So what is epsilon? Epsilon is the molar extinction coefficient. Epsilon is molar extinction. Extinction coefficient, molar extinction coefficient, molar extinction. That is molar extinction coefficient means at one particular wavelength, uh, how strongly the sample is absorbing the UV visible radiation is called as molar extinction coefficient. So this is about the base. Now coming to the Lambert's law. Coming to the Lambert's law. So, what is Lambert's law? Whenever a beam of monochromatic light is passed through the sample, then the absorption of the light by the sample is directly proportional to path length or thickness of the absorbing medium. Path length or thickness of the absorbing medium. Path length or thickness. Now, what do you mean by absorbing medium? Absorbing medium is don't be confused with the the solution and absorbing medium. Absorbing medium is nothing but the, the one which is absorbing means what the the container in which we are placing the sample. The container in which we are placing the sample is nothing but absorbing medium. That is the absorbing medium. Container in which. Yeah, Our sample is being placed. Placed. So now let us take the the salt water only in all the containers. So this container salt water. This container salt water. 
this container salt water this container salt water so all the containers contains the same solution that is salt water only salt water only so concentration will not come into picture now so what comes into picture the thickness or path length of the absorbing medium comes into picture comes into picture so here the size of this is small so thickness is this much l and size of this container in which the sample is taken is it will be big wide so the distance is more now here the distance is a little bit more when compared to the previous container so here the distance is maximum we can see that so that is right now whenever we are taking the same solution there is no question of the concentration here so since there is no question of the concentration here we have to discuss the absorption of the light in terms of thickness or path length of the absorbing medium that is the size or wideness of the absorbing medium so what the, the lambert's law states the absorption of the light is directly proportional to path length or thickness of the absorbing medium directly proportional that is as the thickness or the distance is increasing what happens is absorbance increases so absorbance value is less here as the thickness is increased absorbance value is more when compared to the previous here as uh, the thickness or the distance is increased uh, the absorbance uh, will be more when compared to this and as it is uh, very broad uh, or wide uh, so absorbance of uh, the same salt to solution salt to water is uh, is more than the the previous one now how the path length or thickness is affecting right path length or thickness is affecting the absorbance why whenever the, the size of the container is increased in by considering the parameter wide right so it is given by Now, whenever the thickness of uh, or thickness or path length of the absorbing medium is increasing, then what happens is the light has to travel more distance. So, as the light has to travel more distance, it will cover uh, more number of molecules. So, whenever it is covering more number of molecules, so definitely absorbent value is increased. Absorbent value is increased, right? So for analogy, let let us say that we are traveling from Secunderabad to Varangal. So the number of stations uh, in between the Secunderabad and Varangal is less. On the other hand, we are traveling from Secunderabad to Delhi. So the number of stations are more. So whenever the distance is more, what is happening? The stations count is increased. Station count is increased. Means what? Here the stations are molecules. The stations are the molecules. That is, the molecules count is increased. Molecule count is increased. Means what? Molecule count is increased. Means the molecules which are absorbing the light is increased. The molecules content is increased. Means the number of molecules which are absorbing the light has been increased. so more number of molecules are absorbing the light whenever the distance is more so more is the absorbance more is the absorbance right so as the size is increasing the light has to travel more distance so whenever the light has to tra travel more distance it will cover almost all the molecules in this particular container in this particular container in this particular container as it is wide in nature it covers each and every molecule present in the container so as the distance or thickness or path length of uh, absorbing medium absorbing medium is not our sample friends absorbing medium is absorbing medium is the 
container in which we are taking the sample. So accordingly, A equals to same students. We are passing the light I not. So this is I I I right. Now as we are moving, what is happening? Let us say that pi percent of observance because beta is small. Next, let us say that you know, so pi percent absorbent means ninety pi percent is transmitted. Now it will absorb. Let us say that it is absorbing ten percent because the distance travelled by the light has been increased. Distance travelled by the light has been increased means the number of molecules absorbed, the number of molecules absorbing the UV visible radiation has been increased. So absorbance has been increased. So the remaining is some. So totally eighty-five percent is left. And that eighty-five percent. So let us say that it will absorb. So the distance has been increased further. So let us say that it is absorbing fifteen percent. Right. So fifteen percent means how much is transmitted? Sixty percent is transmitted. So sixty percent is transmitted means so almost uh, it will absorb all of the UV visible light because the molecules have been scattered throughout the container. So whenever the molecules are scattered throughout the container, uh, in order to reach those molecules, uh, in order to reach those molecules, the UV visible light uh, has to cover much distance. In order to cover by covering the much distance uh, by the UV visible light, it will touch each and every molecule. So during this touching of UV visible light by each and every molecule present in the sample. Sample. So definitely, the number of molecules are touching. That is, more number of molecules are absorbing the UV visible light. UV visible light. So A equals to same log I know by I. So here it is directly proportional to L. L. L is thickness of absorbing medium. Thickness of absorbing medium. So let us write A equals to A's absorbance, and I know this incident light by transmitted light is equals to epsilon. L. Epsilon is molar excitation coefficient. What is molar excitation coefficient already? That is. So in the case of Beers and Lamberts, both are same. A is same, log I naught by I is same, epsilon is same. Only the difference is in this concentration comes into picture. Whereas uh, in the case of Lambert's law, L path length or thickness of the absorbing medium has been taken into picture. Right. So whenever the concentration is increasing, absorbance is increasing. In the case of Beers's law, and whenever the path length or thickness of the absorbing medium is increasing, then absorbance is increasing. So both the C and L are directly related. So since both are the directly related, directly related, we can write the overall equation as A equals to log I naught by I equals to epsilon C because both are directly related. Concentration. So this is nothing but. Final equation, which is B Lambert's law. B Lambert's law. I hope you understood this video, students. So thanks for watching.